are listening to the Music Ed Mentor Podcast, where we teach music educators how to build, manage, and grow thriving school music programs and have long and happy careers. I am your host, Elisa Jansen Jones. You can follow my music education blog at professionalmusiceducator.com. And in just a few weeks, you can meet me at the International Music Education Summit, where I will be teaching about the easiest ways to get funding for your music program. If you want to learn more about the summit, just Google it, Music Ed Summit. It's the first result on Google. The summit is 100% online, in service, so you can attend from anywhere in the world. And until the end of May, you can register for just $97. Or if you enter the code podcast to check out you, because you are a faithful Music Ed Mentor podcast listener, get 10% off. That's access to 60 plus professional development hours. That's an amazing value. Okay, enough with the spiel. Today's episode is all about finishing strong at the end of the school year, no matter when your school year happens to end. It just so happens that my school year is coming to an end shortly, but that's when the real work starts to begin. So whether you are a first-year teacher or a 30-year teacher, I hope to share with you some insights and tips to help you be more efficient, more relaxed, and have a better experience at the end of this school year so you can start next school year even stronger. In other words, this isn't so much about ending this year, but making it easier to come back next year. This is an especially poignant episode for myself because I'm in a situation right now that, well, I was going to say I hope you don't ever find yourself in, but to be honest, I'm facing challenges right now that I have very mixed feelings about. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to use my skills to the best of my abilities while serving my school and my students and kids who are not my students. I know I'm being kind of vague, but I'll tell you the whole story in just a minute. But first, could you use a new iPad? I mean, as a resourceful music educator, who couldn't? Well, you could win your own. Just sign up to try Smart Music for free before the end of the school year, and you could win a Chromebook. You just find all the information and get started at smartmusic.com slash enter. That's smartmusic.com dot com slash enter. Okay, here's what's happening. Most of you already know that my current teaching situation is K4, which is why the last two episodes on elementary music teaching were so valuable. David Rao and I were teaching from experience. But three weeks ago, four weeks ago, (laughs) I'm losing track of time, uh, the band teacher at my school who teaches five, six, seven, and eight had surgery and needed a week off. My principal asked if I would be willing and able to teach the fifth grade band for that week. This made sense to me since I've already agreed to start teaching band next year anyway, since the current teacher is retiring. I treated that week like an extended job interview. Not that my administration were worried about my music teaching skills, they'd just never seen me teach band. So that's what I did that first week, fifth grade band on top of my 10 classes of K-4. At the end of that week, the band teacher called and said he needed another week off. So my principal asked if I could cover all his classes that didn't already conflict with my current K-4 schedule. I said, yes, of course, I'd love to help so that the band teacher could have some more recovery time and the students have somebody experienced as a sub. This started to put a little pressure on my other projects like this podcast, my blog, the book I'm working on, the article I'm writing for a local magazine, the volunteering I do with our community band, and my handful of business consulting clients. And I'm the director of the aforementioned Music Education Summit. And I'm still teaching private lessons. And I have three kids and a husband too. But I figured, hey, for a week, I can do it. I can handle it. I started challenging myself to be as efficient as possible, something I shared in a recent blog post. So if you're interested in that story, go to professionalmusiceducator.com to see the life hacks I've been using to create more time in my schedule and actually start minimizing my massive to-do list. It's been incredible. Okay. So I teach another week. I'm covering as many classes of his as I can, and I'm arranging my schedule so that I can do so. But 
I can't do sixth grade band. Now I'm thinking they have a concert in just a few weeks and those kids haven't had band for two weeks. And I'm taking a vested interest. I mean, if they have a bad experience this year, they may not sign up next year. And that would leave me as the band teacher to come in a bad spot. So for recruitment and retention purposes, when the band director called again at the end of the second week and said, one more week, I really went to town rearranging my schedule so that I could teach the sixth graders too. I also moved my classes up into the band room so I wasn't running back and forth from my classroom to the other. Now, the good news is that almost all the students from the sixth grade down have been in my classroom in K-4 for at least a year, so I know them all pretty well. And honestly, teaching in an actual music room, an actual classroom, has been awesome. And teaching band again, also completely awesome. Hearing how much the kids have improved in just the couple of weeks they've had me, incredibly awesome. I think you can tell where this story is going. It turns out that the band teacher needed more time than the rest of the school year to recover. I can totally understand and support this. He's not a young man, and you wouldn't be either after teaching music for more than 50 years. Also, my second year of teaching, way, way, way back when, I took the last six weeks off of the school year so that I could have a baby. I was very, very fortunate back then to have my friend Jared who's still teaching music as well. He was just graduating from college as a band teacher and was willing and able to sub for me, just as the band teacher at my school is fortunate to have me willing and able to sub for him. Of course, this has affected everyone in the school. The K-4 students have had schedule changes and all of them are in a new classroom. The adjustment has been easy for some and challenging for others. The eighth graders have lost their band teacher, who they've had for four years, and will have to play their final concert at the school under the direction of a teacher they don't know, other than knowing who I am, and occasionally singing in the mass choir that I conduct. I went, to tri- I went into triage mode. Most of the school instruments are in disrepair. Some of them, most of them, are unplayable. I've started doing the spot repairs that I can, Thank you for my 14 years of working in a music store so that at least the kids have instruments that play. I've gotten a few on loan from the music store so that if a student forgets one, they have one in class to play, or if their instrument isn't working, they can at least play in class. I've started having my fourth graders who will do band next year start trying out instruments with me in class rather than doing an after school evening thing. I've cut numbers from both the concert programs we'll be doing in a couple of weeks. I've combined all the middle school kids into one band, rehearsing separately, but they'll perform together. And I've picked songs I think we can have sounding good in six rehearsals. I've cut unnecessary things from my schedule, like private lessons, like consulting clients. I've stopped working on my book, things like that. I've also cut my hair to be more efficient as well. It's required a full reprioritization, not just of what's happening in my job and my school, but in my life. And that's what we all need to be doing right now at the end of our teaching year. There's a lot to get done at the end of the year from inventory to final purchases so we can use up our budgets to grades to concerts. The list goes on and on. So here's where we get down to business, okay? We want to start by going to the show notes for this episode. You'll find them on smartmusic.com slash blog. Just search for episode 023 and download the ultimate end of year checklist that I have created specifically for you. Totally free. Just go to the blog, find this episode and download it. Or you can start your own list. Just write down everything you think needs to get done by the end of the year. Once you think of everything you need to have done by the end of the year, start thinking of things you want to have in place by the first of the next school year. Things that will set you up for more success and less stress when you come back. Then go into triage mode. If you don't know what triage means, think of it like if you've ever watched the show MASH, uh, which is the army hospital show, there's a battle and all of the casualties come in and the surgeons have to go through them and decide which ones can wait, 
which ones just need a simple bandage that a nurse can do, and which ones need to be rushed in for emergency surgery. That's triage. You're going to do that with all of the things that you have to do. So you start by looking at this massive to-do list, okay? Cross off anything that doesn't actually have to get done. They're the things that are nice, but you really don't need to do. For me, this was things like creating sing-along videos and tracks for my K-4 classes so they could practice their music at home. Probably not totally necessary. I started cutting songs from the final concert, songs that for the band kids were just too hard to learn in six rehearsals, and songs for the K-4 kids that were just too wordy or had a bad range, and I didn't have time to teach them how to do it correctly. Then go through the list. And now that you've got rid of everything that doesn't actually have to be done, we're going to circle things that can be put off until after school is out and you don't have that hourly commitment to teaching. This might be things like purging your music library or reorganizing it, rearranging things in your room, or sending choir robes in for cleaning, or finishing your book. Now, once you've done that, you've gotten rid of all of the stuff that doesn't have to happen. You've procrastinated, meaningful procrastination on the things that can wait. Now you're left with only the things that actually have to get done and get done now. Next to each item, write the day you will get those done. Just, and this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, make sure you schedule them for days before they actually have to get done. Don't schedule them for the day of when they have to get done and try to get them try to get them done at least one day in advance. Two is even better. So for example, I have our local instrument repair guys coming in from the local music store to help me go through the instrument inventory and get rid of the ones, or at least identify the ones that are non-repairable, tag the ones that can be repaired, and clean up the ones that are in good repair, just need a good cleaning, okay? Plus going through the cases and all that. Anyway, the point is they're coming in on a specific day. But before they do, I want to have the students help clean out all of the cases. I want to have all the instruments into a spreadsheet instead of a three by five card file before then. Before I can do that, I have to collect all of the school instruments from the students. They're going to have to turn them in. And I'm going to have to track down any instruments that have been loaned out to non-students because, yes, apparently that's what we did. So you see, my checklist now is forming into a schedule. Just remember that for most of your tasks, you're going to have to augment the time that they take, really kind of exaggerate it. Tasks that you think will take you only an hour will probably take you twice that. So plan accordingly. Don't set yourself up for failure by booking too many things into one day and assigning to them time slots that don't allow you to complete them. You're going to feel a lot more encouraged if you schedule tasks that can be completed in the time that you have allotted to them. I also recommend taking a little time every evening to plan out your next day. I've been doing this for about two and a half months now, and I cannot believe the difference it has been making in my life. I mean, before I was always doing a to-do list, but now I'm being super like in depth with it. Okay. So the things I need to do for myself, the things I need to do for other people, and I'm planning it out. I forget things less often now, and I don't have to make so many decisions during the day because I've made them all the night before. This frees me up from decision fatigue or, and this is the plague of my existence. I swear it (laughs) decision paralysis. Okay. I know ahead of time what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear, how I'm going to do my hair, what appointments I have, what I have to take from school or bring home from school, and what tasks I have to do in each of the hours I have to work on things. I know ahead of time which periods during the day I can do the tasks on my list. Now, while you're sitting down to write out your big, massive to-do list, I recommend doing one other thing. And that's considering one habit you can commit to that will improve your life right now, but also next school year. Pre-planning your day is one example of that, but there's also the options of doing a morning routine 
or incorporating more exercise into your daily schedule, dedicating time to personal or professional development every day, keeping and maintaining a budget so you're less stressed about money. Whatever you feel you really need to be doing and have been meaning to implement but just haven't gotten around to it. Immediately, right now, make the decision to start doing it. You don't have to wait for a certain day. You don't even have to wait for the morning. If you're listening to this at three o'clock in the afternoon on your way home from work, decide to do it right now. When I decided I was going to alter my sleep schedule, and I talk more about that in that uh, life hacks post on professionalmusiceducator.com, I decided to alter my sleep schedule so that I could get more time done, more things done during my day because I was basically stealing hours from the nighttime, right? My husband suggested that I wait and start it in the summertime. I told him that I wouldn't need to have that habit as much in the summertime. I needed it right now, immediately. I need the yoga I do every morning to keep my body strong and energized. I need my reading time to keep my stress levels low. And I need more hours in my day, more than ever before. This is a need-based change, and I don't want to put it off. So that day, I jumped right in. It's when it becomes a need to change a habit that it's easier to make the habit take over. Just say to yourself, I'm making this final push for the end of the school year. I'm stressed. I need this habit now more than ever, and I'm going to just do it. Then do it. Finally, Whatever the end of your school year is looking like, remember to have compassion on yourself. I was talking to a music teacher friend of mine just the other day, and she confessed that her recruitment night, she just about lost it. Now, she has been doing this for 14 years or more, but even she couldn't handle the stress of that evening. She's just got so much going on right now. We all do. I told her that her feelings were totally normal which is the same thing I told myself when I accepted the job of subbing for the band director at my school. I said, I am perfectly poised to be successful at this. No one could do this better than I could. And I said, I don't have to do this perfectly. I just have to do it the best I can. Every day, remind yourself that you're doing the best that you can. And that's what matters most. Be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself often. Start changing out the word should for the phrase, I get to. It's not, I should do my instrument inventory today, or I should be working on this thing at school. It's, I get to do my instrument inventory every day. I get to do this thing at my school. I love the quote, you are the most important person you will meet today. It is true. You really are the most important person you'll meet any day. So what does your ultimate year end checklist look like? What things do you do that you don't want to forget that will help you stay on track, not just for the end of this year, but for the start of your next one? What is the one thing that you have remembered that you think a lot of music educators tend to forget? Click over now to the smartmusic.com blog. Remember, this is episode 023. It's the same place you'll go to download the ultimate checklist, which I know you want to grab. And in the comments on that post, just share your ideas. Because remember, we are all in this together. With that, I want to thank you for listening to this short episode. I made this one short on purpose because not only are we busy people, but the next episode is kind of extra long because I wanted to make sure you had all the information and resources at your fingertips instead of having to wait two weeks for a second episode. All right. So have some compassion on me now for this short one and appreciation for the next one, which is extra long. Now, I want to remind you also to join me and 25 other presenters from around the world for the 2018 International Music Education Summit coming online this June. Register today by going to musicedsummit.org slash registration. That's musicedsummit.org slash registration. And if you can't remember the URL, just type in 
to Google Music Ed Summit is the top result. Enter podcast at checkout to get your 10% off. And the next Music Ed Mentor podcast episode features two of the presenters from the International Music Education Summit. And remember, if you could use an iPad, sign up to try Smart Music for free before the end of the school year, and you could win a Chromebook. You can find all the information and get started at smartmusic.com slash enter. That's smartmusic.com slash enter. Don't forget to like, share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a thing, and you can help other music educators discover all the great advice, tips, and freebies we offer you as our loyal listeners. We love you. Now, until next time, be good, make good choices, and have fun, and keep teaching on. Yeah.